So you've seen the sine rule. You know you've got to have certain pieces of the triangle together, opposite sides and angles to make that work. But what about the cosine rule? Is there a cosine rule? Does that work? You know it does. What's up, y'all? I'm Tom. This is Like a Math Class. Let's get to the cosine rule. All right, so first off, just like the sine rule, this is often also called the law of cosines. So whether you're talking about the law of cosines or the cosine rule, these two things are exactly the same. Different parts of the world call them different things. And the other very important thing to remember, just like the sine rule, this is only reserved for non-right triangles. You cannot use this with right triangles. And why would you want to? If you've got a right triangle, you just use SOHCAHTOA. So remember, only for non-right triangles. What we need to do to use cosine is we need to create these two separate right triangles. One is going to be made up of this right here, and one is going to be made up of this triangle right here. And this is our height right there. So if we've got these two right triangles, this side is going to be opposite of B, so we'll call this side B. This side over here, this would be side C because it's opposite angle C. And this over here, this would be side A. Now with cosine rule, we're gonna be focusing on angle C and angle B. Now cosine uses the adjacent side, so we need to kind of break up side A into two parts, into this purple part and into this red part. The purple part, we're going to call this X, and over here, the red part, or this red side, we'll call it A minus X. X plus A minus X is gonna be just A, right? So we're gonna use these two pieces and we're gonna hobble together kind of a, a, a an equation that will say, if I've got side B and side A and angle C, can we find the missing sides? Can we find missing angles? So the first thing we wanna consider is in this purple triangle, we know that cosine of C is equal to X over B, adjacent over hypotenuse. And I could rearrange this a little bit. If I multiply both sides by B, then I know that X is gonna equal B cosine C. All right, we did something like that once before. And what if we looked at this triangle itself? Well, that whole triangle is also X squared plus H squared equals B squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem right there. Well, let's rearrange this where we have H squared is equal to B squared minus. So all I did was get this in terms of H squared. And why did I do that? Because I wanna focus on this side over here. Here I've got H and now I can relate the these pieces of this whole triangle in terms of h. Now I've got over here h squared a minus x squared equals c squared. So if I expand this piece out, all right, let's let's do that. I'm going to have h squared plus a squared minus 2ax plus x squared equals c squared. But I know that this h squared is b squared minus x squared. So I've got b squared minus x squared plus a squared minus 2ax plus x squared equals c squared. Oh, well, wait a minute. This x squared and this x squared knock each other out, simplify each other out. So I'm left with this so I'm left with this X down here. Well, wait, that X is equal to B cosine C. So I can put that in there. Let's move this up a little bit. So now I've got B squared plus A squared minus 2AB cosine C equals C squared. I'm gonna swap these two things around, but this is the formula book that you get in your formula booklet. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. That's the cosine rule. So if you're missing a side, but you've got two sides and the included angle, you can find that opposite side. Look here. So I've got A, B, and this angle C. And if I want to find this side C, I can now do that. 
All I have to do is drop all those values into that formula, take the square root, and I've got side C. Now, just like we did with the sine rule, we can rearrange these. We could focus from angle B as well. So if I were sitting over here and I knew A and C and angle B, well, I could rewrite this. I'm trying to find side B. Well, B squared is gonna equal, A squared is gonna be the same. Now I've got side C. So I'm gonna add C squared minus, well here, if I change B to C, then I've gotta change B to C. I've got two AC, and we already said I've got angle B. So here is cosine B. And as you could probably imagine, if we're looking for side A, if we had angle A and B and C, and we're looking for side A, we could do that too. A squared is gonna equal b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. These are your formulas for finding missing side. So this is if we've got two sides and an included angle. Sometimes we call that side angle side. When you get into uh, when you get into uh, deeper into regular geometry, we call that side angle side. But two sides and the included angle is when you use this formula. Now, if you've got all three sides, but you're missing an angle, you can just rearrange this stuff. Let's do that real quick. I wanna get this cosine C by itself. So I'm going to add this to this side and I'm gonna subtract this C. So adding all of this, 2AB cosine C is now equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared. So again, I added this and I subtracted this. Now if I divide both sides by 2AB, divided by 2AB, I have cosine C is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared all over 2AB. And let me give myself a little bit of space with that. Remember, you cannot simplify these things because we've got these addition and subtraction values in there. You can only simplify numerators and denominators if it's all multiplication or division uh, within there. So like if you could get it factored where you've got uh, parentheses, those are two things being multiplied. So now you can start simplifying numerators and denominators if you had factors and factors or parentheses and parentheses. But as it stands, there's no simplifying with this. And just like we rearranged, we could rearrange this orange one and that would be cosine B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared all over 2AC and we could do the green for cosine A, where that equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. Now the things I want you to notice about these formulas, over here, C is by itself, notice C is getting subtracted. B, B is getting subtracted. These values are all the same right? The positive ones all kind of line up. Over here, or you've got cosine C over here, that's your finding C here. The things that are standing out are the pieces that are kind of in the extremes. They're the ones that don't line up with all the other pieces in the formula. That's kind of the way that I think of when I'm working with these formulas, so that way I can keep track of all my different sides and angles and all that other good stuff. This, of course, is when you have all three sides. If you have all three sides and you're looking for an angle, that's when you're gonna use this. If you've got two sides and an included angle, you're gonna use this. Any other option, you're gonna use the sine rule. Check that, that video out right there for the sine rule. All right, that's a lot. It's a lot to process, but it's kind of cool to see how you can work this around. So cool that you want to hit like down below. Hmm. All right, let's get to our first example. Let's say we've got uh, the information shown in triangle DEF and we want to find DE. All right, so I've got two sides and an included angle. I'm looking for this side right here. So I'm going to use the formulas over here and I'm just going to bring down one of these so I can copy it straight away. The first thing you notice, because this always happens on a test, you've got a formula written this way and there's no A, B, and C's in here. But what I know is my two sides and my included angle are all going to line up in here. So DE squared equals 7.4 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 7.4 times 12 times 
cosine of 20 degrees. All right, let's grab our calculator. And like usual, I'm going to just drop all of this stuff in here. Why? Because my calculator allows me to drop all that stuff in. I don't need to calculate all the little bits. The calculator lets me do the whole thing. So I'm going to do the whole thing. So I've got 7.4 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 7.4 times 12 times cosine of 20. There we go. All of it in one line. And I get 31.87 dot, dot, dot. So I'm going to put the dots in there. So that way I make sure that I know that it's a long drawn out decimal. And I want to use that whole thing when I'm going through and solving for my final answer, because this is for D E squared. So I need to take the square root of both sides, including all those dots. So D E side D E is going to equal the square root second X squared of my answer, second negative sign, 5.6454 dot, dot, dot. And as we do, we're gonna round to three significant figures. So that's gonna be 5.65 centimeters. And we can say that's three sig figs. Always make sure you're rounding properly. Don't just cut off or truncate the values. Do the whole thing. All right, that's how we find one side when we've got two sides and the included angle. What about our other situation where we've got all three sides? All right, so I'm going to just use my other equation now. My other equation said that if I was looking for cosine of C, I'm going to have A squared plus B squared minus C squared because that's the one that's standing out over 2AB. So in this case, this is the one that's standing out because this is opposite this angle. So this is the one that I want to be over here because it's opposite the angle that I'm working on. So cosine theta in this case is going to equal 24 squared plus 22 squared minus 20 squared all over 2 times 24 times 22. So cosine theta is equal to, again, let's use our full calculator. I'm gonna use the alpha y equals, I think on your calculator, it's gonna say alpha f1, but it's gonna give me a fraction, so I can put in all the values exactly like I see it on my paper. So I'm gonna do 24 squared plus 22 squared minus 20 squared, and that's gonna go over two times 24 times 22. And that gives me a value of 0 0.625. Now that doesn't give me what theta is. That gives me what cosine theta is. So I want to know what theta is. So I need to do the inverse of cosine of 0 0.625. And theta will equal the inverse of cosine of this answer. And that will be 51 point. 3178 dot 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 degrees and since I'm going to three significant figures theta will equal 51.3 degrees all right so that's using the cosine rule now it's cool because like I mentioned you can use the cosine rule with the sine rule mix that in with the area of a non right triangle and all of these things fit together very nicely make sure you keep an eye out for our website it's going to have more resources on it, and I will see you in the next video.